Hi there, and welcome to my Itty Bitty Chapel. My name is Patty Chafee, and I'm the community minister at Niantic Community Church. I'm also a spiritual director and an expressive arts facilitator. The Itty Bitty Chapel is a few moments offered midweek to relax, refresh, and reflect on a spiritual word or phrase. It's usually filmed in or near a sacred space within my home called the Itty Bitty Chapel, and our candle is lit to remind us of the presence of spirit within and around us. Our word for reflection today is stillness. I have a quote I wanted to share from someone you might know. Learning how to be still, to really be still and let life happen, that stillness becomes a radiance. God. Or Morgan Freeman in Bruce Almighty, if you've seen it. He plays a great God. Imagine learning to be still in such a way that allows life to just happen. So much so that stillness becomes radiance. Imagine what that might look like. Imagine if we stopped trying to control everything just for a minute. <laughs> Imagine if we trusted God enough to just be and stop trying to manipulate the outcome. We're really good at that. What if stillness opens our hearts, our minds, our senses? What if it heightens our awareness of beauty in the most mundane things? What if in some way we come alive through stillness? Think about that. In Sue Monk Kids, When the Heart Rate, she says, Sometimes a graceful wasting of time invites a holy encounter. Sometimes a graceful wasting of time invites a holy encounter. I love that. Can you remember when the last experience, when, when you last experienced a graceful wasting of time? What were you doing? What did time, how, how did time wasting occur? Was it conscious? Was it a conscious choice? Or did it happen organically? Did you experience a holy encounter? We're all very familiar with Psalm 4610, Be still and know that I am God. It's a well-known scripture with lots of interpretations. Not being a biblical scholar, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go with what makes sense for me. And I invite you to do the same. How does this scripture speak to you? I feel like I'm being invited to be still, be quiet and listen, and try to understand the nature of our God and the indwelling spirit within us. So, we need to be still, get quiet so we can hear and tap into the knowledge that God dwells within us, embracing it in a deep way. Some of us hear better than others. I listen in different ways than some because I have a significant hearing impairment. In some way, I think I listen with my other senses in order to hear if that makes any sense. I will soon learn if I'm being granted some hearing aids after not hearing well for more than 50 years. For years, I wanted nothing to do with them. Didn't even want to talk about it. <laughs> then my hearing got worse, and I decided, well, maybe I'd consider the prospect. I got to try one for a few days recently, and it was amazing the things I noticed. Like the sound of paper towel tearing. Have you heard it? Like really heard it? <laughs> the sound of each tiny perforation coming apart. It's fascinating. I've spent a lot of years enjoying quiet and stillness. But even with that appreciation, I still find myself with opportunities for stillness interrupted by my own restlessness. 
It's human nature, I think. But the invitation is there. Centering prayer is an invitation to go deeper in our prayer life and in our relationship with God. We show up, we get quiet, though our minds may be reeling. We center back to an image of, of our word. We experience God's presence within us. Powerful, eh? It can be. Pastor Stephanie has been practicing centering prayer for years and offers a group experience on Zoom on Tuesdays at 1 and Wednesdays at 5.30. Contact the church office if you want to explore that. And if you want to learn more about it on your own, you can visit contemplativeoutreach.org um, or download their Centering Prayer app, which is very good for creating a container of space for that, that kind of prayer. It's really, um, it's really a, a beautiful experience. Micah Busey is a United Church of Christ ordained minister, currently serving Judson Memorial Church in New York City. It's a congregation committed to seeking the intersections between spirituality, justice, and creativity. I wanted to share his December 7th tiny prayer with you. So take a deep breath with me and let us pray. May you close your doors for just a moment and focus your full attention on your own need for restorative solitude. May you stop trying to force constant engagement with others. May you trust that your own soul knows when it has been run ragged and that you know how to heal it. If you will only stop and tend to its ornery creaking. May you remember that the only sustainable way that you can continue to generously love others is by first generously loving yourself. And once you've reclaimed that self and reinforced your own foundation, may you open up again, welcoming others back into the orbit of the renewed sanctuary that you've become. Amen. Sometimes we just need to breathe deeply be still and watch the snowfall. Namaste.